Hi. Welcome to Belmont Journal. I'm Steve Rosales. It is February, what, 27th, 2023. And we are here today with the co-chairs of the Belmont Economic Development Committee. I want to welcome Paul Joy and Catherine Vensky. How are you? We're good. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. Come on in. So you guys are the co-chairs. Paul uh, is a Belmont resident and uh, business owner here. Uh, I guess former business owner here, but his shtick is business consulting. He can tell us about himself. And you might know Catherine as the owner of the very popular and successful Helena's. Uh, formerly of Cushing Square, now in ensconced in Belmont Center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So welcome, welcome. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. So, okay, the Economic Development Committee. Sounds wonderful. Who are... Who are you guys? Uh, we're a group. <laughs> How's that of, for a simple that's question? That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, we're a group of business owners um, appointed by the select board, um, and this is a new, newly formed committee in 2020. In 2018 and 2019, there was a Belmont business study that was formed to write a charge for the current committee. Okay. So the committee is, is so it's it's an actual town committee. It's not an ad hoc committee. Mm -hmm. It's an official town committee, uh, formed by the town, appointed by the selectmen. Uh, you two are the co-chairs this year. It has representatives from the Planning Board, Zoning Board of Appeals, a new one, Rene Guo, mm -hmm. correct? From Rene Guo. 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 Okay. Uh, I've I've yet to meet her because she's brand new, right? She just got appointed yep. to the committee. Yeah. We have Erin Brown. Uh, we have Win, uh, Wendy Etkind. Uh, we have Paul Joy, who are you. Uh, we have Darren Muction, owner of the Toy Shop of Belmont and Belmont Center. Mm -hmm. Jack Sai, he's the owner of Number One Taste yeah. uh, over in Trapella Road by the old Studio Cinema, mm -hmm. and now the current developer of a restaurant in the old 5 and 10 space mm -hmm. That's right. mm -hmm. up in Cushing Square. We have Emma Thurston. Uh, she was former chair of this committee and chief operating officer of Calverde Naturals. We have yourself, Catherine, mm -hmm. uh, Helena's Boutique, and Marie Warner, uh, founder of Boston Women Connect and Warner Professional right. Sales. Uh, and you have Gabrielle uh, Distler as your staff liaison. Mm -hmm. So um, I did some work. There's a lot of stuff on your website. So if you actually, for those that might be interested, if you Google Belmont Economic Development Committee, It'll take you right to the page. You don't even have to hunt. And there's a lot of very cool stuff there. So your charge. So what is it that you've actually, uh, that you, uh, are you charged to do? Um, we have, we have five charges under the, the, um, are charged by the select board. Um, first is to advise the select board on, um, other town boards with concerns about bylaws, policies, regulations, zoning. Um, our charge too is to focus efforts that maintain and expand the commercial tax base. Um, three is to identify economic changes and consult the select board about that. Um, four is to advocate for state and federal grants, which is really, really important in the town. Um, and five is to establish relationships and improve communication. So that's networking um, and connecting local businesses. Uh, with each other, because we don't have a chamber of commerce. We do not. We do. Uh, we have sort of ad hoc groups. I know that there's a Belmont Center Businessmen's Association. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I just identify it with either Darren or Darren and Jerry Dickhout of Champions. That yes. seem to be the yeah. the people that do that. Things like Town Day and things of that sort seem to go through there. There's a very loose one. I don't even know who's in charge of Cushing Square, because that's kind of still in development mm -hmm. with the, the Bradford all, uh, all that litigation that hopefully will come to an end and we can put some stores in there, mm -hmm. whatever those stores might be. Um, but you've hit a couple of things there. So um, economic development here in town. We have a lot of vacant storefronts um, on all of the commercial areas. You pick it. Mm -hmm. There's Waverly Square. Go ahead. There's, there's Belmont Center, obviously. There's been a number of vacancies in there. There's been, obviously, here in Waverly Square, there's... Um, some that have been, you know, certainly been filling over the last six to seven months, but there's still more work to be done, Steve. And then obviously at Cushing Square, I think everybody can kind of point to a particular building that obviously has a, a fair number of vacant storefronts. Mm -hmm. But I feel like over the last course of the last year, getting back to the charges that Catherine just mentioned, we've been 
fairly active in terms of reaching out, in terms of educating ourselves with, you know, certainly the challenges, but also the opportunities. And we've also gotten quite good, I feel, in terms of just, you know, realizing what it is we're actually capable of doing and, and focusing on those particular areas. And maybe taking a step back and saying, well, we, we should perhaps hold off on some of these other initiatives because there isn't necessarily the buy-in or the resources available to pursue certain activities. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And ultimately, we've been, I, I feel, Catherine, and you can back me up, mm -hmm. fairly successful with some of these different initiatives. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I agree. So I, to Paul's point, we have a very invested committee. We meet twice a month. We work really hard to um, come up with sensible initiatives that make sense for existing businesses, create the possibility for attracting new businesses, but also our reasonable requests to the town in the state that the town is in with staffing right now. And so, um, for instance, there has we are really advocating that the town at some point um, hire an economic development coordinator. That person would work with planning and community development. Right. Um, that might not be realistic in 2023 and 2024. So one thing that we talked about our committee at a recent goal setting meeting was um, how do we take those tasks that uh, economic development coordinator would do and give those tasks to the town and say someone in an existing position should be addressing these issues in order to support existing businesses and attract new businesses. And the reason we're doing that, Steve, is because it can't just be on our volunteer committee to pursue all of these different activities. Like Catherine and I can't be the ones that go out and say, well, we want to recruit business X, business Y, and business Z. I mean, we can do a certain amount of that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we also need to have proactive buy-in from both from the select board as well as from town administration. And I think that's, that's incredibly important right now. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, yeah, recruitment seems to be, I mean, I'm yeah. looking at just take Belmont Center. Sure. And, and Hopefully it'll be short-lived, but right. you know this. What the former CVS building is empty. Yep. The former Bank of America building is, is for empty. It's for sale. Right. Is for sale. That's yeah. empty. Mm -hmm. The former Comella space, since they've relocated, is at least empty. Right. Uh, there's a smattering of others. We had, was it Coco, the bubble tea shop, open to Boffo business over the weekend. Mm -hmm. So that sort of filled the former Starbucks space. That's but right. I think there's probably a couple others. Then if you look to any place else, look to Cushing Square, your mm -hmm, former place, mm -hmm, who left. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do have that big development, which is in litigation. I look today, as a matter yeah. of fact, it's been sent back to the trial court for some uh, for some trial. So that, that'll that wind its way through another year before that gets figured out. But there's still vacant spots roaming sure. around up and in there. And of course, down in uh, Waverly, where we are down here at the studio, you know, there's vacancies in those new buildings. Although I do see a, I do see a sign or a banner for a bakery that's coming in. So mm -hmm. uh, a somewhat famous bakery that obviously has a very wide reach across Greater Boston. We're, we're actually pretty pretty happy that yes. know, Waverly is going to be able to have mm -hmm. Tate coming to Waverly Square. I think it's going to be a great addition, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. certainly to Waverly. Yeah. So you know, understanding that Belmont is is Belmont, and by that I mean we we're so, we have a very limited amount of space. Yeah. I mean, I went over to Home Goods and the, I, I, I ventured into the market basket craziness over there <laughs> over the weekend over in Waltham. But every time I go, there's more building, there's new buildings that you see from 128. These are big tax producing, yes. revenue producing, yes. labs, big corporate projects. spaces. Mm -hmm. Watertown, Belmont, Lexington, Waltham. We don't Cambridge. have that luxury. Yes. So, so what can be done to try to fill these smaller spaces that the town might be able to be more proactive? I think there's a couple of things. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, uh, to, to, to one extent, uh, one thing that we've certainly looked at with regard to the committee is finding ways to reduce the amount of time it takes from when you start the process to opening a business, especially a restaurant, mm -hmm. to actually mm -hmm. when you actually, to when you were able to actually open the door. Mm -hmm. um, like Coco's is a cl classic example of this. They did not have to go through the ZBA, Steve. They were able to expedite the process to the point where they were able to open now, as opposed to waiting another month or two months or three months. And in, court, in, in direct you know, comparison with that, you have um, Butternut Bakehouse, which has an opening, a opening storefront um, right next door. Um, it'll be their second location. Their first one is in Arlington. Mm -hmm. Um, they've had to go through the ZBA, and it's just taking a little bit more time. Like, it's not just 
the, the government regulations within the town of Belmont. It's also getting a good architect, getting a good contractor, getting the staff that you need in order to expand. Um, and so I think one of the things that we would certainly like to look at is finding ways to reduce the amount of time it takes from when you first start it to when it actually opens up at the, at the other side. And with, some cl and with a lot of clarity yeah. so that, you know, like Butternut Bakehouse, that owner's done this before. She has a very popular location in Arlington Center. So this will be her second location. Yeah. And um, Paul and I have, re have reached out to her and we went to her um, ZBA hearing in order to support her. Yeah. Um, but I think there is an existing checklist for how to open up a business in Belmont, but those checklists quickly become outdated and don't necessarily apply to every type of business. You know, I'm a retailer. It's pretty easy to open up a retail business. Right. When I say that, opening any business is very challenging just for the capital that you have. Mm -hmm. Paul was talking about getting the architect, getting the contractor right. It's wrought with problems outside of dealing with the municipality. Yeah. And it's expensive. But when Paul was mentioning a business's opening being delayed due to problems with the town, that's money. And sometimes that uh, business loses staff that yeah. they hired. And all of those really impact a business. So to your question, how can we fix this problem of empty storefronts or how can we help? Um, I think the town, at least trying out, um, taking an active role in some sort of recruitment. You know, um, in other towns, sometimes when there's an empty storefront and there is someone who specifically works in economic development, they'll look at successful businesses in adjacent towns and say, maybe that person would like to open up a second location yeah. here. And how can we invite them to do that and try to make the process easier? Um, there's a lot of businesses, including mine, that have a location in Arlington and Belmont. Those communities are only about five miles apart, but clearly there's room for that. There's room for those businesses to open up a second location and, and flourish. Um, you know, for years, Belmont Center has not had a vacancy. And the vacancies that are appearing are not just a product of the pandemic. There's multiple reasons why those storefronts are empty and have remained empty. Well, it, it, it's, it's, uh, I'm an old timer here. I've been here 62 years, but I've worked in the center. I've always been living in Winbrook and, you know, mm -hmm. growing up, there was Filene's, the anchor store, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it had the First National, which was a First National store. It was a grocery store, mm -hmm. regular meat, butter, eggs, and bread, weekly grocery store. Right. That served quite a purpose. I worked there, I don't know, through college and law school. And uh, it was very popular, small, but very profitable. Mm -hmm. Next to it was the Sages, which was the more gourmet shop. You get your smoked oysters there, your, your, your brie cheese, your more, more upscale stuff right. uh, at that store. But those brought in a lot of foot traffic, and then mm -hmm. it spawned little things. We had the cheese shop, but then we had women's clothing. We had a shoe store. We had an actual deli where you could actually get a hamburger mm -hmm. um, or a tuna on, on, on white. Uh, all those things are now gone. You have too many banks. Mm -hmm. Not that I don't mind banks, mm -hmm. but how much is that? Is 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 the landlords? I mean, the the now it's CVS, but for I don't know how many years that Filene's Macy's space was vacant. It's it's, um, it's it's an important question. I mean, we've so you know Mark Palillo, who you you've interviewed, he sure. he's certainly reached out to a number of different landlords. We've had a couple of meetings just to understand what their challenges are and certainly ways in which we can reduce the amount of pain points that they have to mm -hmm. recruit additional businesses. Um, I guess we can certainly report it, but we've heard that it takes six to seven to eight months from when they show a given property to the time when it takes to that, for that business certainly mm -hmm. to open. Mm -hmm. um, and we've heard that loud and clear. And so it's, and that, those yeah. meetings that Paul's talking about, I think should continue. Those are Absolutely. very fruitful. So that was, um, the town administrator's office, it was community development, um, DPW was sometimes invited to those yep. meetings, it was Paul and myself and Mark Palillo, and mm -hmm. really asking the question to a landlord, what do you need, what's happening, Why, you know, if you have a vacancy, what can we do? And that's a great start, is yeah. to listen to that. Definitely property owners play a big role. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, um, you know, across the street in, in Belmont Center, the Locatelli, Locatelli properties, 
Um, that landlord does take great care in creating a diversity of tenants. Like if he has, has a woman's retail shop in those new spaces after mm -hmm. the Macy's was, mm -hmm. um, Bileen's Macy's was subdivided, um, that is going to be the women's retailer. And I really have an appreciation for that as a small business owner that a landlord does take the time to try to find the right mix of tenants. In Belmont Center, it's amazing that we have a bookstore that has a cafe. It's amazing that there's a kitchen store. Like all of those bring in real foot traffic and have a diversity um, that is, is really unique in a block that's as small as Leonard Street. Mm. Um, you know, when we're talking about the challenges in Belmont and Belmont Center, Belmont Center is still held up by a lot of communities as being an example of a beautiful downtown. Right. And I, what I was hoping to do on our committee, committee, and I still have a lot of hope for, is looking at those successes in Belmont Center and being able to replicate those mm -hmm. in Cushing and in Waverly as opposed to those communities being forgotten. You know, I had a business in Cushing for eight years, and there's a big difference between being a business owner in Cushing Square and a business owner in Belmont Center. Well, I've been to both. As I said, my law office is in Cushing Square, so I would quite often walk over there and um, get what I needed. Mm -hmm. I have three daughters and a wife. I could always find something at Helena's. So from a that. selfish viewpoint, <laughs> just for being able to walk around the corner when I said, oh, right. you know, wow, I didn't get a gift. I gotta, yeah. I gotta go get something. Uh, it was always there. Yeah. Now I have to. Now I still go, but I have to drive down to the center. But, uh, but you but can still, still do get a, good. you can still get a decent egg also at Teddy's. You can you still can. get oh, a yeah. nice sandwich over at Ovenbird. I mean, Starbucks from three o'clock to five o'clock. The after school rush is packed. It's a credit incredibly busy section. Mm -hmm. um, well, we still need some something across the street, and we need to fill. So yeah. there is some hope. The the five and ten Jack Sai, I mm -hmm. guess, is is going to try to fill the five and ten with some kind of a he will Japanese. Yeah. At least that's the word on the street. Mm -hmm. I'll wait to see him. Can't wait to see. Wait till it opens. Quite frankly, then there's the old Aram space. I don't know. He 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 had yeah. to close because of an unfortunate situation mm -hmm. uh, with. Uh, uh, not caused by him. <laughs> That's so I'll but, put it like that. But, but demand is also changing. I mean, people are staying home more than they were pre-pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so as a result of that, you do have like this work from home, but people don't necessarily stay in their homes to do the work. They want to go other places during the course of the day mm -hmm. just to get away and to meet perhaps other working professionals across Belmont. Mm -hmm. And this is not changing. I mean, I don't think we're going to have a period in the next five to 10 years where you're going to have Monday to Friday going into Cambridge, going into Boston, going into wherever your workplace ultimately might be. People are going to be staying in higher numbers within Belmont because this is kind of a winner in the work from home given economy that, mm -hmm. we're, that we're now looking at. Well, okay. Well, then, yeah. all right. Well, given that, given sure. that uh, probable reality, a probability. Yeah. Uh, so what kind of things do, do we want to have here in Belt? What kind of things are you needed? Or is that still going to be the work of the committee? You've done some things on your website, consumer, right. yeah. consumer survey, and yeah. you had some business survey. For the business survey, parking was always is a big right. thing, uh, and recruitment of different uh, types of businesses that might be able to uh, yeah. uh, be a good association, yes, yeah. be a good combination. You sort of hit it with, mm -hmm. with the Locatelli, uh, but shopping malls, big Simon shopping malls are designed right. to yes. have, I guess, cross-fertilization or cross-pollinization, mm -hmm. right. to have the right mixture of businesses so that they will feed off each other and create right. some food traffic. Uh, foot traffic, mm -hmm. food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, right. it's obviously close to lunchtime. It is close to lunchtime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, uh, how much, have, has any work sort of been done with that, or is that something that perhaps your committee will will try to tackle to try to, to figure out what would be the right mix for this new reality, Paul? I, I feel like we, we've done a couple of things, Steve. So the number one, we, we were able to get a grant of $100,000 this past year. We're able to set up. You a, guys got a grant for a hundred grand. We did. It wasn't. Through How come no one knows that? It wasn't through town. It, I mean, <laughs> so if they got a grant for a hundred grand. Got, we yeah. Got, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, so I'm we, sort of in the know, but okay, right. that's not insignificant. So, so we got a hundred thousand from Will Brownsberger and, and Mr. Rogers from Beacon Hill. Um, we were able to execute this over the course of, I guess it was in July when we launched it mm -hmm. through community development. Um, we were able to give out ten ten thousand dollar grants which was in November. 
Mm -hmm. um, and if you ask Mr. Dash and Mr. Palillo and Mr. Epstein, they'll probably say it was one of the best nights they had this particular this whole year. Is um, the presenting of those yeah. okay, of those well, grants? Yeah. So this money was yeah. um, state surplus, and it was earmarked for public domain and economic development, right. and so. It landed in our lap as a committee because there isn't a department within the town okay. that does this. Right. So, and uh, Patrice Garvin really wanted a grant program, a small business working capital grant program, and we wrote it out. And and this had been coming. Even our former uh, chair Emma Thurston had developed the first draft of that. And so, um, it was an application process where businesses applied, and there was a certain criteria and. Um, as Paul said, yeah. there was a select board meeting where those 10 businesses came and, and got to tell their story, too. Um, and, you know, not all select board meetings are that gratifying. No. <laughs> and, and that joyous, <laughs> frankly. And yeah. so um, that was a big thing that we did last year. And this was also coming off of the fact that, you know, Belmont got ARPA money and did not have the ability to advocate, to, to allocate any of that money towards economic development. Right. We had asked for a certain percentage. Um, and so this um, $100,000 that came from the state was kind of in answer to that and was um, you know, given out to businesses. And, and um, I guess people don't know about it, but it, it was probably one of the most monumentous accomplishments yeah. that we had in the last year. Well, they, kudos, kudos. I mean, uh, if I, we, guess, I guess I don't have my ear to the ground as much as I, <laughs> no as I give myself credit for, apparently. I mean, I mean, if we could do more, I, guess, I think we would have liked to do more, but we realized this was the, the opportunity that we were going to be given, mm -hmm. and so we decided, okay, as a committee, we're going to accept this, and we're going to push this through, and community development, to their point, was able to you know, run this grant program, get the applications, and then issue the money. And I guess it was over the course of a couple of months. Mm -hmm. It was faster than I think they even they realized. So, yeah. but you pushed for some, as a committee, you pushed for some, uh, an allocation of some of what I'll call the ARPA or the COVID funds that yes. came in. Yeah. And, uh, well, the money's yeah. there. They just, the, the ones that dole it out yeah. decided otherwise. Mm -hmm. Maybe they maybe need to advocate a little... A little, well, little more. Maybe you need some more public push. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's sitting there. Yeah. I get it. Mm -hmm. I'm a believer you got to cast your bread on the water, quite frankly. I mean, recruiting is, is, yeah. is key to me. Find the right businesses. Mm -hmm. Find the right mix. Find the right spot. You know, I'll go on a little... So, let's look at the McLean. There's some R&D already zoned. It's all sitting there, sit mm -hmm. there for 20 years, however long the things, nobody's there. I'm looking at Watertown, any place across the border, right. they're building lab space, right. pharma, whatever it is, R&D, like crazy, mm -hmm. wherever, gas stations, suddenly yeah. an R&D building. Mm -hmm. So why is it that Belmont can't get somebody, it's a rhetorical question, but I'd love yeah. your viewpoint, to actually go out and find a business that I'm sure would love to be on a bucolic mm -hmm. campus on the grounds of a world-renowned uh, facility such as McLean Hospital right. uh, and just give them, you can build by right a building this big, this wide, this tall, right. give them the drawing, say you fit this square, mm -hmm. in this square you mm -hmm. can build it by right. Mm -hmm. uh, why can't we do that? It's a rhetorical question. but. I think right now it's a matter of resources. I think that it that is that that's a, a time consuming and a jo job that requires right. investment. It requires multiple meetings. Um, I think that the knowledge is there with the town, but but even if the end result is you want that development to come, that also requires then more work to be done. It's sort of like in the same way that it takes work to apply for a grant. Mm -hmm. And then when you get that grant money, you have to execute what you promised you would execute. Right. And for a town that is really um, suffering right now with resources, I just don't know that it's there right now. I would agree with that. I mean, right now, community development and the planning division has three people, which is clearly understaffed. They have to fill these open positions that they have been advertising for. Um, and, and number one is, I think, a town planner. I think it's inconceivable, Steve, that we've gone six or seven months mm -hmm. since when Mr. Hummel left to the point now where it's 
the end of February, and we yet still haven't gotten any decent number of applications or a, a final, you know, appointment into that particular position. If I was if I was to make a recommendation to the select board and the administration's office, it would be we should ab absolutely prioritize the filling of that given position over the next three months. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we got about three minutes left or so. Three, three, four minutes left. So, well, you've done. First of all, thanks. I'm learning quite a bit about this committee. It's active. It's online. People can pop on. It's it's on the calendar every week. You're do meeting by Zoom. You're eating virtually mm -hmm. at the moment, yeah. mm -hmm. so people can log on and see what's going on and we at any point in time. And right? we want to hear from people. Like if you have different ideas, don't don't just go into the Facebook page and, and spew it off. Like come to us and actually have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And we're totally willing and able to listen to those types of concerns. Well, I appreciate that. No and uh, okay, so, so what do you? So we've talked about what you've done. What are your thoughts and wh where are you going? What's on the board for this year coming next? What do you see in the um, future? I'd like to talk about wayfinding for a minute because I think that that's really important. Al although I think that Paul speaks to that better than I do. So um, we there had been a, a grant that had come in to develop. Wayfinding, which is signage, oh, okay. and, and really important in a town to be able to invite people right. into shopping districts and neighborhoods, but also give them instruction on where to park. We were just talking earlier about not knowing where available parking might right. be. That's what wayfinding is about. So um, there was a development of and an approval of a beautiful signage, right. um, and now maybe I'll let Paul discuss where that is and where we hope for that to go. Well, basically, yeah, we were able to come up with a final design. It was approved by the select board. It was basically, it was based on the idea of a, of a Belmont gardenia. Um, and so the sign is done. Like, it's sitting there. It's, it's ready to be put into the ground. The question is, well, how do we allocate the dollars necessary in order to put it across the Trapella corridor in different, or in different parts of Belmont? And so I don't know what the ultimate cost would be. The thing about signs is once you put them in, it's a one-time cost. They're going to be there for quite some time. But Steve, I would I would love for you know Belmont to be able to say, okay, we're going to give fifteen or thirty or fifty or more to be able to get these signs into the ground and let people know when they come into Belmont that this is the direction to, to the city center or the town center. This mm -hmm. is the direction to Cushing. Um, this is where the library is. This is where the high school is. This is where you could go to the habitat, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, but there's, you know, there's a lot of different op op options and opportunities associated with wayfinding yes. that we need to basically enact this. Um, the time is now. And so I think having that availability of, of those funds and also actively fundraising in order to basically push this over the top is something that I would certainly like to see happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. Wayfinding. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, yeah. I've learned a new term. <laughs> but there you go. I, I could use some times to find my way. Thank you. So, uh, well, there you have it. This week, I, uh, we've exhausted our time. Yeah. We'll have them back to continue this, this very important discussion. I want to thank Paul Joy and Catherine Vensky uh, for co-chairs of Belmont's Economic Development Committee for joining us here on Belmont Journal. Uh, Check it out online. Just Google Belmont Economic Development Committee. It'll bring you right to the page, a wealth of information. They want your help. They want your input. That's it for today. You've been watching Belmont Journal. I'm your host, Steve Rosales. Until next time, take care.